twilight combined with the scenery of Egdon Heath to evolve a thing majestic without severity, impressive without showiness, emphatic in its admonitions, grand in its simplicity. Evocative lines that create an atmospheric backdrop to Hardy's melodramatic novel The Return of the Native. Egdon Heath is near his birthplace, which we know as Puddletown Forest. Although largely forest now, some expanses of heathland remain, resembling a landscape that Hardy knew, which in his imagination stretched much further to the east towards Wareham. His birthplace, today known as Hardy's Cottage, is on the perimeter of Puddletown Forest. It retains an air of romance and is in the care of the National Trust, as is Max Gate on the outskirts of Dorchester. Exploiting his early skills as an architect, he designed Max Gate, where he lived from 1885 until his death on 11th of January 1928. Many of his famous novels were created here at Maxgate. Photography has a wonderful and creative ability to express another interest, especially subjects that respond photographically. Hardy's graphic descriptions of his landscapes are centred on Wessex. They are based on real landscapes and form the backdrop to his compelling stories, places that we can visit and photograph whilst we imagine the plots that intensify their appeal. For the Woodlanders, we journey along Murderer's Lane. Today, a public bridleway across Bubdown Hill to Melbury Bub, Hardy's Little Hintock, with wide-ranging views over Blackmoor Vale, his Valley of the Little Dairies in Tess of the D'Urbervilles. Less romantic perhaps, but equally important is Henchard's house in the Mayor of Casterbridge, now a Barclays Bank in South Street, but sporting a blue plaque that honours a character of fiction. Many other buildings in Dorchester feature in Hardy's novels, including The King's Arms, St Peter's Church and Grey's Bridge. Not all are associated with happier times. At Grey's Bridge, Henchard stared into the waters of the Froom, considering his fate, whilst his world was falling apart. We start at the birthplace, where photography is permitted. We take a lane from the visitor centre, or for the more active and attractive woodland walk, and with the bonus of a delightful approach to the cottage that is not seen from the lane. After lunch, immerse yourself in the return of the native by taking an easy stroll on Egdon Heath, only a few yards from the cottage. My visit was on a sunny yet atmospheric day, perhaps not exactly conjuring up the impression of Hardy's moody description of the heath at the start of his book. Although his ashes are interred in Poet's Corner, Westminster Abbey, his heart is buried at St Michael's Church, Stinsford, his Melstock in under the greenwood tree. It is also the resting place of his wives, Emma and Florence. At Maxgate we can imagine Hardy at work, but it is at the Dorset County Museum in the centre of Dorchester where we can view and photograph the finest collection of Hardy memorabilia, 
where his study has been recreated as it looked at Max Gate. For our second tour, we seek out the landscapes that inspired Tess of the D'Urbervilles and the Woodlanders. Great Hintock in The Woodlanders used as its model Melbury Osmond, and Hardy was quite graphic in its description, which he later tried to suppress. Hardy's parents were married at St Osmond's Church in 1839, and the marriage certificate can be seen framed on the church wall. We shall spend a few moments exploring this attractive village with its thatched cottages and ford before a final tour across the county to Beer Regis via Cern Abbas and Puddletown, previously known as Piddletown until Queen Victoria paid a visit. Thomas Hardy is also highly regarded for his poetry much of it written after Jude the Obscure. Today his stories still invoke feelings of nostalgia, reflecting an era that has vanished forever, but can still be seen in the landscapes of West Dorset, even without half-closed eyes or rose-tinted spectacles. These feelings have also been reflected in music, particularly Gustav Holst's sombre tone poem Egdon Heath, depicting very precisely the mood of the heath on a wintry afternoon in The Return of the Native. His poems continue this nostalgic theme, and perhaps none more so than the self-unseeing. Here is the ancient floor, foot-worn and hollowed and thin. Here was the former door, where the dead feet walked in. She sat here in her chair, smiling into the fire. He who played stood there, bowing it higher and higher. Childlike I danced in a dream, blessings emblazoned that day. Everything glowed with a gleam, yet we were looking away. <laughs> 